Hello and welcome to the Global Dialogue. I'm Shireen Bhan and it is our pleasure and privilege to have on the program Neil Mohan, the global CEO of YouTube, joining us here today. Neil, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 and welcome to India. Uh, and if I could start by saying that this is a bit of a special homecoming for you, isn't it? Because it's not just your first visit as CEO to India, but you have a special India connection uh, because you, you did what, high school here in Lucknow? Yeah, um, and obviously I'm of Indian descent. I grew up uh, mostly in the Midwest in the U.S. Uh, I was born in Indiana when my when my father was a grad student there, uh, and I moved uh, back to uh, Lucknow, where my where my family's from, and uh, went to high school here, as you point out. So, in that sense, it is a bit of a homecoming. Of course, I have lots of friends and family and and the like here that I've stayed in touch mm. with over the years, but. Uh, it's a homecoming uh, in that sense, and it's also a homecoming in the sense of my role as the CEO of YouTube and getting to meet all these amazing creators that I've only connected with either electronically or, or in other ways and getting to meet them in person too. Well, I would imagine that that's going to be pretty exciting. But let's talk about India and the role, relevance and significance of India as far as the YouTube global story is concerned. What's exciting about India? I know it's one of your fastest growing markets, but if you could give us some color on just how important and significant it is for you. Yeah, I would say a few things about that. So as you point out, it is our uh, fastest growing market. It's also our largest market in terms of audience and, 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 and viewers. And so in many ways, it is um, uh, so amazing to see the vibrancy of our creator ecosystem here in mm. India, to see, you know, just walking uh, along the streets outside of my hotel, seeing how YouTube is used in everybody's daily lives, uh, seeing all these amazing creators. And so seeing that vibrancy is amazing. But the other thing that I think is also really interesting to see, and you really don't get it until you experience it firsthand, yeah. which I've been doing, is how India is leading in lots of just global trends uh, in terms of the creator economy all over the world. Lots how of so? things happen here first. Well, you know, as an example, um, this is uh, our first but also largest market for shorts. We mm -hmm. launched shorts, YouTube shorts here, uh, I'd say now about four years ago. And uh, we've served up trillions of views uh, on, on, on uh, YouTube Shorts. Lots of things that happen on Shorts in terms of fandom and trends and things like that, I see first happening here in India. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of that is just a testament to uh, the creativity, the storytelling culture here. Um, and so it's just super exciting to see it firsthand. You know, you talked about the storytelling culture and, and how you're seeing that uh, manifest itself in the way that people are consuming, but also creating here in India. But if I you know, were to go back a little bit and talk about how you see YouTube for the future, and I know that you believe that it is at, uh, YouTube is at the nexus of technology and creativity. At the back end, you've got software engineers. At the front end, you've got the creative economy mm -hmm. sort of driving it. Do you see that mix changing? Do you think at the back end we're going to see you hire differently as you move to more and more of a creative era? Hmm. That's, a re that's a really interesting question. And, and I think that um, you know, our mission, mission is to give everyone a voice and show them the world. And that's like a, it's like a, it's a very simple sentence, but I think it has a profound meaning in terms of how we approach our business. And I always say, I, the way I always talk about it with our teams is our job is to build the stage. Mm. And it should be the world's best stage. And what I mean by that is, metaphorically, it should have the best technology, it should have the best experience for viewers. Uh, uh, but the people who are on the stage are our creators, mm. musicians, artists, all of our media partners. And so the value that we're adding to that equation is the, the quality of that stage. And that's really the technology. And so we bring um, uh, the technological innovation, whether it's AI, whether it's new creator tools, whether it's our discovery mechanism so that new creators mm. are found every day. But the creativity comes from our creators and we have a team, an amazing team, really throughout India that works hand in hand with our creators to make them successful or help them be successful on our platform. But the way that we are going to participate is always from a technology innovation standpoint. You know, I'll get to the tech in just a bit, but I want to pick up on what you just said on, on what's happening as far as the, the creator economy is concerned. Uh, so it's not the algorithm, it's authenticity that's driving the creator economy? Well, you know, the, way, the best way to really think about the algorithm and a uh, person on my team 
uh, always reminds us of this is that you should replace the word algorithm with audience mm. because what the algorithm or our recommendation systems on YouTube are doing are, are, are connecting you as efficiently as possible if you're a creator with your audience, with your fans all over the world. And so think of the algorithm, so to speak, as your fans, your mm. audience, because that's what YouTube's job is, is to put your amazing creativity in front uh, of those fans. And so that's really um, how we think about it. And that's our role is to continue to use our innovation, our AI to do that. Um, you know, and as a result, um, that works for our creators, but also works for our viewers. You know, according to Comscore, we are the largest streaming platform on connected TV. We have the largest you know, viewership, both in terms of watch time, but also in terms of actual viewers. And so that's just a testament of, of this creative ecosystem sort of working for our creators, but also for our viewers. Uh, so I want to understand from you, you know, uh, what you see as the potential headroom for growth. Uh, add uh, revenue up 13% year on year, if I look at your Q2 numbers mm -hmm. uh, for Google, and subscriptions up 14%, largely driven by, by YouTube. Given the kind of appetite for growth that you see, what could this potentially be over the next few years? So you called out a couple of them. So you, as you point out, we do have this sort of twin engine growth model or business model, if you will. And so I would say that, in my view, we're in the early days of both of those business opportunities. I think the advertising ecosystem will continue to grow. Uh, I'm here also to meet with a lot of our largest advertisers, our brands. What they tell me when I meet with them uh, here on the ground in India, but all over the world, is uh, they love that authentic connection between mm. creators and their fans, and they want to participate in that. And so I think there's a lot of upside to be had there. Uh, on the subscription side, I think you know, we've been in the YouTube music and premium business for a few years now. As you point out, we've seen really nice success there, over 100 million subscribers for YouTube premium um, around the world. Uh, but I think there also uh, there's lots of upside to be had because those are oftentimes some of our most passionate and ardent users of our platform. And so there's a lot more growth to be had on that side of our business. So when well. you talk about growth and when you talk about, uh, you know, consolidating your dominance, whether it's music or looking at sports differently, what kind of innovations, both on the front end as well as on the business model, can we expect? And how do you differentiate yourself from all the others? I mean, let's start by talking about music, for instance. I mean, uh, there there is an offering that YouTube provides, which is different from, say, a Spotify or whatever else is available at this point in time but what kind of innovations both on the business model side monetization uh, that you bring to the table for the future yeah so I'll, I'll start with music and as I said I mean you know one of the things that's nice about our space is that it is an incredibly competitive space there's lots and lots of competition which keeps us on our toes and keeps the space very dynamic so you know you mentioned some of them there um, but you know, you called out a differentiator uh, uh, on the music side. It is about the fact that we have um, all of this amazing music from our music partners, uh, record labels, publishing uh, companies. Uh, but we have all of this content, this fandom that's created around music. Uh, so it's not just you know a, partic a popular track, mm. whether it's a Bollywood track or what have you. It's all the organic content that gets created on YouTube by fans of that. That enhance the experience if you're a music lover. So that's like a uh, unique characteristic I would mm -hmm. describe, which is not only do we have the musicians and the artists doing what they do, but all the fandom that's created around mm -hmm. them is what really sort of powers this creator, creator ecosystem. But in terms of like uh, trends, I'll, I'll call out a couple mm -hmm. of things that you, um, uh, that I would say broadly. One is, um, you know, just the continued, just rapid acceleration of shorts. I mentioned trillions of, of views, you know, 70 billion views a day uh, globally on shorts. I think that's really early days. But the other really big one that I'm very excited about, mm. and it's one that I think India is also leading the way on, is connected TV. Mm. So as I mentioned, uh, we're the number one streaming platform on connected TV. Uh, the use of connected TV has grown 4x uh, in the last few years for us. Uh, if you're a top creator on our platform, your audience has grown 400%. Uh, uh, the, the number of uh, uh, your the top creator whose majority of audience comes from connected TV right. has grown 400%. So 
That, I think, is also a really big early days trend. So connected TV on mm -hmm. one end of the spectrum, short form content on the other, and kind of everything in between. But you know, the economics from a creator's perspective, and I understand uh, that you've given out about 50 billion over the past three years to creators on account of the content that they've created on YouTube specifically. I mean, what are we talking about? What could the size be to loosely sort of call the creator economy? Well, I think that um, uh, one sort of key thing to call out there, which I'm really excited about, you see it again here in the Indian context, is the, you know, the creator economy, you know, we're the original and largest mm. creator economy and we intend for that to continue to grow. But the lines are blurring in terms of who's a creator, uh, who's a participant, who's a viewer. So I think, uh, you know, Shorts is another good example of that. Uh, one of the reasons why I believe Shorts has grown so rapidly in India is because it's given permission, um, both in terms of creativity, but mm. also in terms of the technology for all of us to be creators. We have creators on our platform. Um, uh, there's a, a, a creator named Biju who started during uh, COVID, uh, and he is now the largest creator, not just in India, but in all of Asia, mm. and he started as a Shorts creator. and so. Create the, the participatory nature of creation itself is changing. Yeah. And so uh, it's uh, what I mean by that is like the potential of the creator economy, economy therefore, is limitless. So it's not just a sustainable career. It can be a hugely profitable career as well. I think so. I mean, I always to say one of our goals is not just to help creators build an audience, but to build a business. Because it's when they actually start uh, earning revenue from uh, from YouTube, from the creator economy, is what they can then sort of plow back into their creativity and continue to do that. We have uh, over three million creators in the YouTube Partner Program, and my goal is to continue to grow the number of creators that are participating because it's through that economic opportunity that uh, they get to continue to do what they love. So what do you believe that economic opportunity could be five years on? I mean, you know, if you're talking about creative entrepreneurs that you're essentially helping create, what could that opportunity look like in the uh, next I five mean, years? I mean, it's hard for me to say, put a, put a yeah. dollar figure on it, but I think that uh, we're really still in the early days of what that potential could be. And remember, when I use the term creators, I'm talking about endemic creators, shorts creators. You know, you could be doing, you know, a 15 second short to a 15 minute, you know, VOD to 15 hour live stream and everything in between. And mm. the formats vary too, right? So could be video, could be podcasting, uh, could be audio, could be music, of course. And so all of that is uh, the vibrancy of the creativity. And so if you add all of that, who knows what the potential could be a few years from yeah, now. I want to take you back to your product days uh, and now as CEO. You know, how much of what you did during your product days have you had to unlearn or are there new learnings that you had to bring to the table as CEO? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I would say that, um, you know, a lot of what I do in my CEO role um, uh, is frankly a continuation of what I was doing a lot on the mm. when I was the chief product officer and helping build our products because fundamentally as I as I described to you in terms of our role in the creator economy it is to build the products it's to build that stage that I described and so I still participate of course in setting the overall product strategy for the company but I believe it or not on a weekly basis I'm in product reviews working with the product teams. messing about with the products <laughs> I play I mean I use the products I've got you know um, my wife and my three kids are heavy users of the product so the Mohan household is a big uh, YouTube family so I get lots of product feedback just from my own family members and that's one of the fun parts of the job is to continue to push the envelope in terms of innovation whether it's a small feature that a creator mm -hmm. is telling me about or big ideas like how do we invest in AI. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on that, you preempted my question. So what's next now as far as innovation is concerned? And, and what is the role specifically of AI and Gen AI if, if the idea really has been to use YouTube to democratize content and content creation? How does Gen AI change the game? Yeah. Um, so I'm glad you said both AI and Gen AI yes. because today the AI conversation sort of tends to focus on Gen AI and I'll come to that in a second but you know keep in mind that we have been investing in AI on YouTube for many many years now. If you think about again the algorithm and recommendations on our platform that's powered by machine learning and all the investment mm -hmm. that we've made on that front that we will continue to do. Everything that we do from a responsibility standpoint in terms of 
protecting our ecosystem, the two billion users that come to the platform. That's also a big investment in AI. But the generative AI piece, I think, is really interesting. Again, back to something that you said at the mm. very beginning, which is YouTube really does sit at the nexus of creativity and media on the one hand and technology on the other. And so I view our unique position in this generative gen AI revolution as connecting those two mm -hmm. spheres, creativity and technology. And so what does that mean? Well, it means, at least from my perspective, that everything that we're going to be doing as it relates to generative AI is going to be in service of our creators. Okay. Meaning that they're going to be tools, never replacing our creators. Mm. And because augmenting I, essentially. Yeah, because I've seen two there's two things that I know are true every time there's like a really sort of big technology revolution, at least in the creative space. One is we all as human beings are really interested in stories of other human beings. Mm. And so our creators are always going to be front and center in this new world. But I also know that these tools can can lead to new sets of opportunities that we can't even imagine mm. today. So our investment is sort of squarely on thinking about generative AI as uh, a set of tools for our creators. And again, here I think India has been leading the way. So we've created a um, standalone app called YouTube Create. Mm -hmm. It is a creation app. Um, and it is an app that we are going to infuse with generative AI capabilities uh, to uh, help creators produce content on their mobile phones. We have a couple of experiments that we have been doing. One's called um, Dream Track, which mm -hmm. is a way uh, and a music AI incubator. So we have creators in, uh, like King who are part of that music AI incubator giving us feedback on how generative AI can enhance the music experience for fans. And Dream Track is mm -hmm. an example of that where you can give a text prompt and actually generate music and you know out of thin air. Dream Screen is another version of a product mm. where now if you're a creator and you say something like, um, "Give me you know uh, you know uh, a background with uh, you know India Gate and clouds in the background that are you know X Y Z color," it can generate that mm. in a matter of seconds. That previously might have taken that creator maybe a day or at least several hours mm. to produce using a set of tools. And so that's what I mean. It's like uh, allowing our creators to do something much more efficiently than they otherwise wouldn't or allowing an entirely new class of creators to do something that would have been impossible before. And that's the focus of our generative AI. So efforts. what kind of money are you putting towards uh, being able to create some of these tools? I mean, what is the quantum of investments both on the AI side as well as on the gen AI side? You know, I, I, as I said, you know, the, on the core, just AI in general, I think that that is just deeply infused into our overall product development. So, you know, all the work that we do uh, on the trust and safety side, on the recommendation side, that's just infused mm. with this investment in AI. So it's even hard to sort of parse uh, what's AI versus what's non-AI, et cetera. It's really just part of our product development. And when it comes to generative AI investments, the way I think, of, and here we obviously have at YouTube, we have a deep collaboration with our sister company and Google DeepMind yeah. and, and that, that research, and that's more fundamental research and large language models. Our job is to build the products and features that our creators are going to use, mm. that our viewers are going to use. And there also, I just, I view that as core to our product development process. In order for us to be successful uh, in this new technology, it has to be infused in terms of how we think about all of the features. And so I'm giving you the philosophy in terms right. of how we think about them as tools for our creators. But if we think about them that way, then they should be infused in everything that we do for our creators. You know, you talked about innovation, but let me also tie that down to what's happening as far as regulation is concerned and, uh, and talk specifically about what's happening in India. We've got a pretty controversial broadcast, draft broadcast bill uh, that is not up for discussion yet, but there are uh, consultations that have taken place. How do you read that? The critics of the bill argue that it is uh, a censorship by compliance, essentially. Uh, what is YouTube's reading of the draft broadcast bill in India? And do you see similar provisions anywhere else in the world? Um, well, I mean, as you point out, we work with uh, regulators and our stakeholders and governments really all over the world. And I think that the, at the highest level, we have uh, shared interests, which are to make sure that uh, citizens of all of these countries in which YouTube operates uh, get the most benefit out of platforms like YouTube and making sure that you know those those users are protected on our platform which is a very very shared interest between our our government partners and stakeholders and and, and YouTube and all of our creators with respect to the broadcast bill mm -hmm. specifically I think it's 
real, it's early days. Um, uh, we're reviewing the bill. We're looking forward to that consultative process that you called out with the government and continuing those conversations. So that's probably the most I, I would be able to say about that. My team obviously is going through uh, um, the analysis uh, of it as well. But, but yeah, go ahead. No, no, is, is this, I mean, getting to be a bigger challenge for you to deal with as CEO today? I mean, you know, India's got this draft broadcast bill. Uh, regulators around the world are looking at ways to be able to clamp down uh, on content that they believe should not exist on public platforms. Uh, is it getting harder to navigate public spaces online? I, I think that that comes with um, uh, our, our position in terms of uh, how central we are to the creative economy mm -hmm. in, in, in a market like India, but really all over the world. And so in some sense, engaging with our government partners and our stakeholders is, is, a, is a privilege and also frankly a necessity because I do think that we have these shared goals. Like at the end of the day, my number one priority at YouTube and none of the things that we talked about in terms of business models or innovation mm. or creator opportunities would be possible without living up to our responsibility. And that means everything from, uh, you know, we are a platform. Uh, as I said, our mission is to give everyone a voice. We're an open platform, uh, a platform where there are all kinds of opinions, all types mm. of speech on our platform. But it is from the very early days, that doesn't mean anything goes. Yeah. We've always had community guidelines. And it's our job, our responsibility at YouTube to make sure that our community guidelines stay up to date. They reflect uh, the nature of the societies in which we operate. Mm. Uh, and then to be transparent about them. To, and then do our best using all this technology mm. that I described, using you know the thousands of people we have all over the world that are enforcing those community guidelines, do our best to enforce them. And that's really the only way that I know how to live up to our responsibility and also maintain the openness of our platform that has created all of this opportunity. You know, and that that is, is the current challenge, isn't it? Uh, free speech and yet uh, the need to ensure that there is moderation and there are guidelines and it is a safe space. Uh, uh, What's been the experience on that front today? I mean, you know, I remember you saying that whatever's happening in the world is happening on YouTube. And we have active wars currently on in the world at this point in time. You know, we've got situations that have just taken place over the last few days where uh, there is an active call inciting violence, for instance, in different parts of the world. Uh, do you believe that there is a need to perhaps review uh, the, the moderation uh, community guidelines, the moderation policy, is there a need to engage uh, actively with regulators, with governments at this point in time around the world? I mean, how do you see the road ahead on this front going forward? I mean, I think you, you encapsulated it, it quite well. I do think um, uh, what happens in the world happens on YouTube and what happens on YouTube does influence what happens in the world. And that's why uh, living up to our responsibility here in India, but really globally everywhere that we operate around the world is my top priority. It's what I will prioritize above everything else uh, because it is um, the right thing for us to do, but it is also the basis of you know the business opportunities, the creator economy, everything that we've talked about. And so we work very closely with uh, our partners in government here in India, but really uh, all throughout the world. And uh, I would say that um, we have um, a clear set of community guidelines that we have invested in very heavily over the years. In many ways, we have learned through trial by fire mm -hmm. um, over the years to, to understand sort of how those community guidelines could be written, how, how they should be clear. But they are always up for um, uh, um, uh, being modified. Uh, it's important for us to have clear principles, but then also to be flexible in terms of how we adjust them. Because as you rightly point out, what's happening in the world is changing on a regular basis. Mm. And so that's really how I've approached the space. And, you know, it's something that's near and dear to my heart. It used to be what I was responsible for, even as a chief product officer before I took over as CEO. And it's something, as I said, that I'm going to prioritize both in terms of my time, but also resources at the company before anything else. Uh, and I know you, you know, you've got the three P's that you believe in, uh, people, principles, and, and <laughs> process. And, and I can see that, you know, the principles is part, part really of your uh, legacy as CEO that you want to leave behind. But uh, just 
just to continue on this, the quantum of content that you're having to take down today versus a couple of years ago voluntarily uh, versus what governments or regulators are asking you to take down, uh, uh, which you sometimes may or may not agree with. If you can give me some color on, on how things have changed on that front. Well, what I would say is that, uh, generally speaking, at the highest level, I don't think uh, things have changed that dramatically in terms of uh, the number of videos. You know, every quarter we remove millions of videos from our platform. Many times the majority of the channels that we remove are, uh, you know, kind of spam and those types of things that ha uh, that we, you know, we, we pride ourselves in being very efficient in terms of removing because they sort of clutter the experience, get in the way of the viewer and creator experiences. And that you know, hasn't changed. I mean, those are those things have sort of the, in terms of the raw raw numbers there. And remember, even when I say millions of videos removed from the platform on a quarterly basis, that's a very small fraction of the corpus of content that's available on on YouTube. So I would say that that's been uh, relatively consistent. What is also consistent, of course, is that any country that we operate in, we are going to abide by the laws of that country. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when there are um, uh, uh, when the process in terms of following the law uh, comes into place and that sort of channel exists, we are going to comply with that. And so that's you know something that we're very clear about. Uh, we want to be efficient about, and that's sort of how we approach it. But I will just you know bringing it back to where the conversation mm -hmm. started. It's important to keep in mind that the vast, vast majority of creators and the viewership and the watch time that we're talking about uh, is really about all of these amazing verticals that exist on our platform, whether it's sports or learning or mm. cooking or music or all of those. And that's really the core experience that I'm witnessing, you know, during my time here in, in Delhi uh, that viewers are telling me about regularly. You know, you talked about learning as one of the exciting verticals on YouTube. Uh, uh, going back to your startup days, what was it? Organic chemistry that you were hoping oh to God. teach people? Oh my God, wow, you've done a lot. You've done <laughs> like lots of research here, yes. You know, that was one of my first uh, forays into entrepreneurship. It was a computer science. I, I was, you know, I've been a computer science uh, uh, enthusiast even in my early days in high school in Lucknow. And I had, a, I remember my very first computer. And I loved, for some reason, I loved chemistry. That was one of my favorite subjects. So I combined my love for computer science and chemistry. And I created this software package, this organic chemistry package that just taught people about organic chemistry. And then I... I did a 1.0 version of that, then I did a 2.0 version, which was like, how do you do organic chemistry experiments? And anyways, that was, uh, that is a blast from the past. But that is, that, you know, the roads, I guess, in some sense, all lead back to that in, in, in some but, You way. know, that was a blast from the past, but let's, let's end with the future, uh, Neil. Uh, you know, you give me a glimpse into what is exciting at this point in time, but uh, what, to your mind, could YouTube potentially be over the next few years? You know, what, what are the new vistas, for instance, that you would hope to, to touch, to achieve? Yeah, I think, again, back to our mission, in a nutshell, I want to be... I want to make sure that we are the best streaming platform for creating, sharing, and watching video, whether it's 15 seconds, 15 minutes, 15 hour live streams, and, and everything in between. And so for us, uh, for me, that's about investing in, as we talked about, uh, AI and generative AI in terms of creator tools, uh, investing in new ways, new avenues of monetization to continue to grow the creator mm. economy. So. AVOD business models, SVOD business models, uh, but two others that I'm very excited about are things like shopping and commerce. I think that's another area where India will lead the way. Uh, fan funding, so direct to consumer business models for our creators, so that's another aspect. And then, as I pointed out, the growth of both participatory creation via tools like Shorts on mobile, mm -hmm. but also increasingly consumption on uh, connected TV, especially for the younger generation in India, when they turn on the television set, they're turning on YouTube. And so we have to lean into that and make sure that it's the best experience possible. You know, and I'll end by asking you, we grew up in an era of linear TV and then, you know, then then we had cable and so on and so forth. And, and it was 60 minutes on the news and today you're doing 15 seconds on, on shorts and so on and so forth. I mean, how much of of sort of being a part of this ecosystem has meant for you personally to really, uh, you know, adapt not just to change but to connect with this demographic as well. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I, I, um, back to the early days, I am a technologist, but I've also been 
a media junkie. I love everything from I love news, I love sports, what, what, I love what music. What do you spend most of your time on? Uh, in terms of content? Yes. Yeah. Sports, probably. I'm a sports <laughs> nut. Um, you know, we're, I've I've watched I watch all kinds of sports: basketball, football, cricket. YouTube's uh, you know did 50 billion views of cricket. I think in the last uh, 12 months, and so I just love I love all forms of media, and that's what keeps me excited about the job that I'm in. And and you're right, like a lot of this is through the lens of young people. I've got three young people in my own house. I get to see. What their um, what they assume as just a given around their media consumptions, as you as you mentioned, I still remember the days when, as you said, we went from linear TV here to uh, to cable, right, with the advent of yeah. Star and yeah. the like, and changed the game, right? Yeah. Like for as a media kid like myself, it was like my mind was blown, and I think that's happening to this generation through things like shorts where they get to participate, but also, you know, live stream and watching uh, all this fandom. So like, you know, my son, he watches uh, sports, he'll watch the live games, but he watches all this amazing creator commentary mm. that's happening uh, in parallel to it. Just like the way that I would watch, you know, a cricket highlight show when I was in high school. So advice to legacy media incumbents like us, I mean, what should we do or not do uh, to, to sort of flourish and thrive in, in the era that we live in today? Well, I, first of all, I think you, and you know this, I mean, your, your channel and set of channels on YouTube are incredibly successful. And so you figured something out in terms oh, of- We've had our best month in July, so that's good news. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's really a continuation of that. And uh, I, I view, uh, you know what you what uh, you know what you're doing but also what I think news in general is doing of leaning into all forms of format storytelling uh, it's awesome to see how uh, uh, journalists are personalities on our platform because that authenticity really comes true through and it's uh, it's everything from shorts to you know kind of 24-hour live streams and everything in between that's another area where I'm just amazed being on the ground here in terms of how um, traditional media companies, news organizations have really embraced and leaned into YouTube as a way to not just connect with younger audiences, but just really to kind of move forward their businesses overall. Neil, it's been an absolute pleasure. We wish you the very best of luck and we look forward to seeing you back here in India uh, soon. Uh, uh, and thank you very much for sharing your insights as well as your views on what uh, YouTube's future looks like. Appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, that. with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of the Global Dialogue. From all of us here on the team, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There's a lot more coming up right after this.